All right, people, let's get into it. I am Garrett, and you guys are amazing. Uh, the Isolation Filmmaker Challenge is the first contest I have ever hosted. I uh, didn't know quite what to expect, but over 70 of you made title sequences from 30 countries around the world. If you want to see what everybody did, I will put a link below to the playlist of all the publicly viewable ones. Some of them it wouldn't let me add to the playlist, but you can see it there. You guys hit every genre from comedy to horror to drama. You guys used green screen, made miniatures, did stop motion, animation. It was really, really cool to see. I watched every single one of them and you are amazingly talented. But of course, because it's a contest, we have to have winners. And in order to determine winners, we have to have judges. So these are the judges for the Isolation Filmmaker Contest. Our first judge is Tom Antos. I, I like that. Now, Tom is a cinematographer, director, and visual effects artist with experience from short films and commercials all the way through feature films. And he has a fantastic YouTube channel that you can learn a lot from. Our next judge is Kitty Peters. Hello. Hi, everyone. My name is Kitty. Kitty is the founder and chief cinematographer at Atola Visuals. She, like me, focuses on commercial work primarily, which is a really cool thing to see. She has a YouTube channel, Atola Visuals, where you can learn about photography and film making. Our final judge is Curtis Judd. Got a clipboard. Official judge. Curtis is an amazing filmmaker and YouTuber. You can find him on his show, Learn Light and Sound, where he gives in-depth reviews on cutting edge tech that is being used in the scene. Because there were so many submissions, we of course can't watch and critique all of them in this video, but here is a look at a handful of the best ones that came in, and then we will announce the winners at the end. Piano, open door. Love the slow push coming in. I like this music. It's very ominous. Oh. There's blood there. Who he kill? The heartbeat. Love the text. Good use of font and font placement. I feel my heart beating with that sound design. Nice close-ups. I like that. Very, like, intimate looking. Oh, that pull and stretch is so good. Dropping stuff into the dumpster, going to the records. Love the shallow depth of field. And nice lighting. Uh -oh, is this about a serial killer? Ooh, these close-ups, these macro shots. Making some plans with the close-up eyeball shot. Love the eyeball. Like anatomy books of some kind. I love that shot. And that little look at the end of the camera. Created for television. Damn. Great choice in font. It's clean, it's systematic. This feels like a real show. I want to watch the rest of it. I like the sound design, like meaning the, the sound effects, but also the mix with the music. And I like how it kind of starts off all innocent. Just a guy coming in. It's interesting, it's this interesting contrast of this sort of music at first, this piano piece. It's kind of kind of curious and happy and upbeat. And then you have all this contrast with these bloody hands and you know, washing things off in the shower and then putting something in a plastic bag and dropping it in a dumpster. I just feel like he's a murderer, but he doesn't feel guilty about it because I see him drinking some wine, acting all chill at the end of the day, going about his writing and his books. Do the lighting on here, I'm feeling it. And the cinematography. I like the use of the, all the, like the real extreme close-ups and, and kind of slowly revealing little bits of information here and there. You've got, you know, it gets darker and darker in both terms of the visuals and the music. So it's intriguing because it starts happy, so it's almost like you want to know about this criminal. That's what I think the show is about. I almost forgot that uh, that the contest is for just the title sequence. I was like expecting to see the the, the actual short or or a film after because that's it. Really, really, really just feels like a, like a, you're about to see a movie. Very, very good first first video so far. Congratulations! Shall we move on to the next one? Thank mm -hmm. you. 
Slow piano. Another good simple font. Netflix. <laughs> Got a light with a shaft coming down. Nice, nice graphic here of the, of the world. Really minimal shots. I like this. Is this animated? Almost has kind of, even though it's using graphics, almost has like a like a Schindler's List kind of, yeah, like a World War II kind of thing, uh, like a documentary kind of style. Ooh, stop! I love. Oh, something's migrating. And those little rays of light. I, I like that. Sound. Like the cinematography is really cool. I like how we're seeing war stuff, but it's not aggro. Like it's very slow and methodical. Still, this kind of reflective piano music. Now we have uh, torpedoes. I'm assuming these are 3D models. Did you make these? Wow. It's black and white with a little red. Again, it looks like Schindler's List kind of thing with a bit of that red. The boat with the schematics over, it's pretty cool. And it kind of contrasts, I mean, saturation coming through. I'm weak for good contrast, I'll tell you that much. Love the, f it's almost like there's like a soft filter over it, which is kind of sweet. Oh, it's a model ship. That's what the wooden wire is, okay. I'm assuming that that boat is real. Ooh, I love how those letters came in like that. Very, very nice. Oh, I, I like it. I, I like it. Wow. Good job, man. I really like the color. This also very much feels like the story kind of within the story, where this is clearly about war of, of some description, but it's not about that. And I love the idea of isolation tying into this boat where, you know, you've got presumably people either stuck on a ship or, you know, that are stranded on a boat. Whoever's in that boat is isolated. So, so it kind of creates this very sad and kind of almost claustrophobic kind of feeling. So I, I like that. I feel like this really dark background goes really well with the boat theme because in the ocean, you're out there in the dark darkest of nights there's no city lights there's no street lights so very good on the tone here i'm really feeling it what i liked about this one is it's telling a little bit of a story so i have a sense for what this show is going to be about i don't know all the details obviously but i know what i'm getting myself into and it's kind of interesting and compelling that way again good choice of music for this particular piece perfect music choice for this very good wow this could be a wallpaper for sure bravo man bravo Moving on to number three. Ooh. Oh, they're going to Netflix. Okay, so we got some, what appears to be German. That's Mindhunter vibe all over the place. Like some CIA kind of thing. Oh, we got a president with a circle around his face. Okay, so some true detective. Analog equipment, kind of repetitive music. Really cool use of fast versus slow shots. Some bells. Ooh, now intense strings are picking up the intensity. Yeah, it's like some kind of a spy thing. That's what that's what it looks like. Again, this recorder and the color gray, this all feels very much like a David Fincher kind of thing. Some documents, analog meter. Ooh, we've got some German. Love the double exposure stuff. Tape's running really fast. We're building intensity. Now we have drums. This bass, though. Brilliant. With a gong at the end. Isolation, and we keep circling the president's face. Another good one. Yes. Very cool uh, graphic design. Like, very cool, you know, just, just the look of the titles and how the text is revealed with that whole kind of feel of like a, sometimes it feels like a typewriter font and then how it's also used, like live action footage is used as a, as a mat to reveal, for example, footage of like the tape recorder going and things like that. There's definitely, it was this massive musical crescendo, which was very effectively played. Visually, we did the same thing in terms of crescendo. So it started kind of slow and then it picked up the pace. At the end, the tape was running really fast. Some more modern looking guy takes his headphones off. And it all works really, really well. The, the, the hairstyle is the only thing to me that's like, oh yeah, that's shot today, as opposed to like really selling it happening, you know, back in the date of this taking place. People like to call this the sepia filter, but it does have that orange red tint to it. So it was a nice contrast between the blue color correction, this like steel look with this vintagey orange touch. 
Good job, man. I really like the text too. It really fits this kind of vintagey, old school typewriter vibes. Okay. Aspect ratio. Ooh. Ooh. Okay, brushing a bird skull. Brushing something with a toothbrush that looks gross. Genius film. I uh, can't read it properly. Oh, I love that. Bubbles. Really flat color grading. Okay, it's a Ouija board. Nice rack focus. I'm guessing something to do with ghosts. Looking through some paper and a notebook. Oh, it's making me feel queasy. Love the delay, kind of the doubling delay. Oh, witchcraft. <laughs> evil looking, evil looking drawings. Did you draw these? You're an amazing artist if you drew these. Wow. Again, with this dissonant sort of pad music. Yeah, this shot, that's getting to me. A close up of the razor blade. It's like pure evil. So what this? Ooh, it's a Ouija board. <laughs> somebody doing funky drawings. Like, oh, somebody very disturbed, planning a murder or something. If I had to guess. All right, photos cascading down. Love that. It's a great jump cut between those two. And he's creeping on these teenagers. This disturbs me. I think that's what they're going for. 666, six, six, the devil burning one of the drawings with a 666 six, six on the forehead. Ugh. Okay, so we're, we're playing with fire again. And then isolation sort of scrawled out in a very sloppy kind of freaky manner. This one really creeped me out. And so if that was the goal, mission accomplished. I felt very uneasy inside. So good job on capturing those vibes and emotions. Really, really cool font choice. Again, matches the tone and style of the piece that you're going for. I think that there's too much of the glitching. I feel if you're gonna put text, you kind of want people to re read it there. So you can have it blurry or jumpy, but then you have to leave it on so it's clear for people to read. I didn't feel like there was as much of a story but maybe there is. I guess it's something to do with like witchcraft or I don't know, devil worshiping or something. I like how horror genres just play with your emotions all the time. In a less than two minute piece, you really did a good job of moving me, certainly, to goosebumps. So good job on that. I would have never thought to be scraping my skin off and then putting it in the fire. <laughs> That's some creepy, creepy things, but <laughs> good job all around. Hopefully you're okay burning paper in your house. Be safe, always. But yeah, good job. Next one. Very Peter McKinnon, Daniel Schiffer vibes. A Netflix production, okay. Very different music. Grunge with vocals. Love the depth of frame in that shot there. Footsteps in the wood. Somebody with an axe. I like how the font's sticking to the trees. Love the motion tracking on the text. Some guitars. This one has a different vibe to it than all the others, definitely. Ooh. I like the transitions in this one, like something like a little wipe or zoom or things like that. Wow, it is science. Color grade, very good. Kind of very um, cyan. That shot's great. Really cool. Kind of the paws looking over the water in the mountains. I miss hiking so much. This is making me miss it more. I'm guessing it, something about a guy living in isolation in the wilderness. I mean, that just seems pretty clear with that. He's walking around with that axe and everything. And it disappears. Oh, that's kind of a cool touch. Totally very different than some of the other ones we're watching. This feels very much like a Nat Geo show where we're following somebody in the great outdoors, you know, living off the grid. I, I like the way that the, the text is kind of displayed over the bark of the tree or, or things like that. I like how the font was sticking to the trees and you keyframe those. I really like when font moves with the images on the scene, on the screen too. It's a very nice touch. I really like the music. 
I thought the visuals were beautiful. It's a great use of slow motion. It's a great use of shooting naked in that like your hand holding a camera and you're doing kind of the rolling stuff to make those shots work. I do like the camera moves or like I guess it was done in post and then that kind of adds to the the transitions, the little flip or the kind of zooms and things like that. I feel like the colors were a little too saturated compared to the rest of the footage. Even though it might be the same LUT, I would have just brought this down a little bit more and adjusted that. Because as soon as it came on from this shot, I was like, wow, brightness. Just that, that kind of very punchy, kind of that those purple and kind of reddish and those kind of, yeah, colors. I'm not a big fan of that, but I'm guessing that's the style, like the, the fringing that was done. The orange and teal is, uh, again, a very popular thing that's happening right now, but as far as like the way that you would actually grade a show or grade a movie color-wise, it would never be quite that punchy, so I'd probably pull that back a little bit. I don't really know what the show is going to be about. There's just this guy walking in the woods in the mountains. Who is he? Why does he live alone? Does he have a family? Did he leave his wife? And with title sequences, you really gotta lay out like the tone and the vibe and pretty much tell your viewer what the story is gonna be about without telling the story. But man, the concept is so strong. So great work on that. That's really, really awesome. Super round of applause for everyone who contributed into this. And I know not everyone could win, but you guys are winners to me. So without further ado, here are the winners. In third place, taking home the three-month commercial license to Epidemic Sound, the Smooth Q2 Gimbal, the Rode Video Mic MEL, and the Lux 1600 Mini LED Light is Matthias Stryker. Matthias, I'm sorry if I mispronounced your last name, but congratulations to you. You are going to be getting that. I will be reaching out to you for the details on that. So great, great work. In second place, taking home the six month commercial license to Epidemic Sound, the Zhiyun Weeble S Standard, the Field World F6 Plus camera monitor, the Zeppin Micro 2 with easy lock and ball head slider, is going to Dom Udell. Dom, again, apologize if I messed up your last name. Um, I loved this piece. This was such good work and such good visual storytelling that without words, you really were able to convey a lot of tone and emotion. Um, fantastic job. And finally, in first place, taking home, deep breath, the one year commercial license to Epidemic Sound, the one year subscription to Red Giant Complete, the Zhiyun Weeble S with image transmission system, the Field World F6 Plus camera monitor, the Light Panels Astra 6X bi-color LED light, the Angelbird SSD to go PKT one terabyte hard drive, their AV Pro CFast 2.0 card and 2.0 card reader, the Vaxxis Atom 5, 100 wireless HDMI image transmission system and the Comica Audio Boom XD wireless microphone system. <sighs> A lot of prizes. Goes to Vincent Seifert. Vincent, this is such an unbelievable job telling such a big story with such minimal things from the model boat to the 3D assets, the single point lighting with kind of the lighting on the globe showing kind of the expanse of what I'm assuming is the invasion. You did an amazing job setting me up and building my expectations up for what this really could be. And isolation as the title for the theme that you created makes perfect sense. That final shot where we see the tiny boat with the globe behind it and then the name Isolation, I instantly was able to put all of those pieces together. So great use for the theme, great use for the lighting, the cinematography. It was slow, it was methodical, and it just worked. So congratulations to all of the winners. I am going to be hosting more contests like this. I had a ball doing it and I would love to get more prizes together for more people to do more cool stuff. So if you want to see some of that stuff, subscribe to this channel because this of course is where I'm going to post it. If you liked this video and you want to see more stuff like this, go ahead and give it a like. And as always, I'll see you in the next episode.